Reloading the 300 Blackout with the Hornady 110 grain Z-Max bullet. Um, I did some videos on reloading for the 300 Blackout and the cartridge itself. Uh, basically what this is going to be, I'm not actually going to show you how I reload the cartridge because it's pretty basic information. I'm not doing anything special. Uh, you should know that. But what I'll do is go over how I develop the load, what I'm using, what tools I'm using, what components I'm using, and the results I got from it. So it's more of a technical information. Okay, so let's start with the dies. Uh, what I'm using is I got RCBS small base dies. Now RCBS makes a whole series of these dies for ARs. Uh, they make them in 30 odd 6, 308, any of the AR-15 calibers, and uh, I think 279. What the small base means, or the SB, the small base dies, is for semi-automatic guns, it gives, it's a couple thousand smaller. It sizes the body down at the base a few thousand smaller to help it feed in a semi-automatic action. I found out years ago with the AR-15, especially if you use a military brass, you got to have small base dies. It's the only way to go. This is a two die set with a depriming sizer and a cedar, and it has the tapered crimp. You can get them with a tapered crimp or a roll, the traditional roll crimp. I got mine with the tapered crimp because it's something new. I personally don't like it. I kind of don't like working with it. Uh, so what I did do to supplement this is I got the RCBS sizing die basically in the seating die. And then I got a Lee factory crimp and I also got a Lee quick trim die. So I used the Lee factory crimp die. I like that a lot better and that's what I used on the slope is the Lee factory crimp. Alright, next we'll go with the brass. Back this up a little bit. Now if you know, if you notice with the uh, 300 Blackout, you can get ammunition, but it's kind of expensive. So I looked around and there's, you know, there's a lot of people, they have videos and there's guys that sell fixtures where you can take your military uh, 223 brass and convert it or your 5.56 government brass. That's what this is, military brass. You uh, basically trim it off a ways and then uh, shorten it, then resize it, reform it. Well, there's a place called blackoutbrass.com, which I think I bought a thousand of these for a little over a hundred bucks. And, you know, it's military brass, it has been converted, it's sized, ready to go, deprimed, and they're pretty clean. They clean them. All you got to do is prime it, fill it with powder, seat the bullet, crimp it, and you're ready to go. Um, I highly recommend it. I've used, it's going to be the last of my first 500. I've had zero problems with it. Uh, you know, I'm not sizing it either. I'm just loading it with powder, primer, and the bullet, and I've had zero problems, and it all works out. But the thing you're going to have to remember, and we'll get back on this when we get to the powder, is military brass a little bit thicker, and it's your case capacity may be less than what, say, uh, commercial made brass. I know they make brass in the 300 blackout commercially, um, but it's, it's rather expensive. This is probably the best way to go. It's formed, ready to go, and then I got the dies. I'll just size them up and go. Okay, so, uh, and as we know, we got all our different bullets. So, what they had on sale, the bullet we're using, is the Hornady Z Max. Okay, it's a pretty neat bullet. Midway had them on sale. I bought 500 of them. It's a 110 grain, 30 caliber bullet. I really don't know what other use you'd have it for. Maybe you could have like a varmint round or something. I never really used 120s or lower in the uh, 30-06 or 308. 
but it's not a bad little bullet. Works out pretty good. Uh, and I end up, the load I'm using today sends it out of the gun. What, I think it's a 16 inch barrel at 2,400 feet per second just about. So that's humming out there. It's not a subsonic load, but it's fairly accurate. Okay, and that's one of the loads I came up with other than the 30 caliber that I was working on. Now, as for the powder, there's basically two types of powder I bought. Um, I went with IMR 4227 because you could use it in the blackout and you could use it in the M1 carbines. I think it's the only powder you can really use the M1 carbine, so I bought a bunch of it. With the 30 caliber bullet, it works out fine. And when I was checking out, the guy goes, well, if you're loading for the 300 blackout, try the little gun. Okay? So I bought a pound of it. I liked the results of the IMR powder with the 150 grain bullet, 30 caliber bullet. But come to find out, when I was loading these cases, uh, and it does tell you in there, when we get to the light bullets, I was going to do a series of loads of both powders, test them side by side, but I found out it was filling the case up. The IMR 4227 was filling up the case. You could go about 17, 17 and a half grains and be all right, but for this light bullet, the load was calling more, I think up to almost 20, and I was filling the case up. 17, I'm not sure what... It was, yeah, it's calling up to 20 grains, and 17 was just about filling it up where there was no room to seat the bullet. So I went with the little gun on that and did a complete run from 17 to 20 grains. And I found that 19 grains was the most accurate with this little bullet uh, that I had here. So I went with the little gun because it's a little bit denser and you can get more of it by weight into the case. So probably if I run any 120s, 130 ring bullets, I'll probably do all my experimenting now with the little gun. And it gives good results for the smaller bullets. Where you start getting heavier to heavier bullet, uh, 4227 does good on 100 and a half. I haven't loaded anything larger like 180 or 220 grains. I haven't done any of that, don't know if I will. Uh, but then again, once you make a load like this, now you got something that's on par with the AK-47. You know, you're lobbing a fairly light bullet out there, quick. Um, but it's still an interesting little gun. A lot of people get them for the suppressed reason. You put the heavier bullet, it goes subsonic, and you got a suppressor. I'm not going to get a suppressor. I just got it to fool around with it, and I kind of like this load. It's fun. Now I'm going to take it out. Once I get this load done, I'll take it out to 100, 200 yards and see what it does. And yeah, with my red dot sight, I have to reset to zero. Because uh, when I was shooting at 50 yards, testing out the ammo, the sights were at 50 yards were off about four inches. So yeah, it's, it's something you got to adjust for. Okay, but that's basically the load and what I come up with with this and uh, like I said Midway had these bullets on sale or something and I bought them the Z, Z Zombie Max bullets they got the little green tip polymer tip on there um, so like I said case if you're using redone military brass you might run into a problem with the powders different powders with your uh, case capacity. That's the one thing I run in, but the little gun works real good with the load. I had some powder, so I got enough of it. I'm going to load up a few hundred bullets, and then we'll take it out and run it at 100, 200 yards. Okay.